We, the northern people of the ocean tides, the Thingit of southeast Alaska, are a proud people of an abundant region. The indigenous translation of our land, Alaska, the great land. Whether human, animal, plant, land, water, sky, many belong to the heartbeat of an abundant place called Haines, where 7,000 foot peaks covered with glaciers feed lakes, feeding rivers, feeding ocean. This place we call Shilhat. Home to our relatives that we adopt as our clan identities, they are the wolf, killer whale, salmon, bear, raven, beaver, shark, sea turn, frog, eagle. Despite man's civilization, many things continue to remain wild. Strawberries, huckleberries, soapberries, blueberries, raspberries, crabs, shrimp, halibut, moose, deer, seaweed, clams, cockles, gumboots, and of course, our main staple, salmon. We even have salmon in winter. How come? There is a warm underground spring that keeps an area of the Chilkat River thawed out during three winter months where salmon hang out. The winter salmon draws more than 4,000 bald eagles who migrate from all over this northern continent to congregate in a three-mile radius for those three months during the winter on the Chilkat. Those eagles feast well. They know no hunger during winter. While the eagles hang out with the salmon, what do we do in the long winter months? We admire sunsets and we create art. Wood carving, painting, metalsmithing, basket weaving, sewing, beadworking, and the weaving of ceremonial regalia. Mountain goats shed their wool in July by running through low bushes up high and rocky landscapes. We pluck their soft gifts as if white peaches from the tree. With the first sign of new growth on the boughs of the cedar tree, we know the sap is running. This is the time to gather the inner bark of the cedar tree. After we gather up our bundles, we store them in a dry place, and when we're ready to split the bark, we soak the bark until supple, and we split it. Cedar bark is used for weaving baskets, rope, and ceremonial regalia. After splitting into fine, silky strips, the cedar is spun on our thigh with the mountain goat wool. It takes an hour to spin ten yards of warp, a thousand yards total for the amount needed to begin weaving a chilkat ceremonial robe. The language of cedar and mountain goat dwells in the voice of each robe. The art of our people is meant to tell stories. Our art portrays relationships. It tells our history spoken in a way similar to the Western use of the written word. Ours is an oral history. There is no alphabet, no written language. Our art is the written language. Tlingit art portrays old legends and new stories. Artists are visual storytellers. We create totemic images of old and new experiences in our larger world community. The relationships we address in our work include village life, clan migration, historical accounts, relationships between man and animals, environmental concerns, or spiritual philosophy. The stories may also reflect personal triumphs, trials, and tribulations. We could think of ourselves as record keepers of time and memorial long tradition of documenting our history. Clan members pass down stories of historical documents to the next generations. These carvings, paintings, or weavings were important and still are as important as in any written document produced on paper today. These documentations are our history books. They say to eat with a fork we are civilized, to eat with our fingers we are cultured. Daily we eat with a fork and yet we are comfortable eating with our fingers. Although an artist may begin their work in traditional form and some may never spring forth from the traditional form, there may come a time where we break out, adding contemporary works, using the many resources that we have today that reflect the change in our culture, environment, and self. It is traditional to adapt to change. It is traditional to be contemporary.